What's up guys, Guillermo here again with another episode of Print Pros. If you're familiar with director garment printing, then you've probably heard that some DTG printers and inks will not print polyester garments well. But what if I told you you can actually print high quality photorealistic images on polyester using a DTG printer? To show you how it's done, I'm going to be using the Image Armor pre-treatment solution and the Wagner spray bottle to pre-treat garments. This step is crucial in producing a stunning print on polyester fabrics, so make sure to take notes because your final product does depend on this crucial step. Both the printer and the pre-treatment supplies I'll be using can be purchased as a complete package on our website, so I'll make sure to link that down in the description. All right, that's enough talking, let's go ahead and start printing. All right, so let's go over what we're gonna be using to print on these polyester shirts. Now, obviously, first up, we have the stars of the show, which are these two polyester shirts. Now, I have a black one and a white one, since I'm gonna be showing you how to print on both. And then here we have the all-important pre-treatment solution. Now, as you can see, I have two different bottles, since we're gonna be printing on two different shirts, white and black. Now, obviously, the Image Armor Ultra is going to be for our black shirt, and the Image Armor Light formula is going to be for our white shirt. Now, both of these are available on our online store, so if you're interested in ordering this today, go down to the link in the description. Then, to do our pre-treatment, we have our spray gun. Now, you can buy these in any home improvement store like Lowe's or Home Depot, but it is also included with your DTG printer when you buy it through our store in the bundle. Now, like I mentioned earlier, for our DTG printer, we're gonna be using the Ricoh RI1000, link in the description. And then for our heat press, we're gonna be using one sheet of Teflon, and this is gonna be 16 by 20 inches. Speaking of the heat press, today we're gonna be using the Ricoma HP 16 by 20. The 16 by 20 stands for the surface area of the heat press, which is 16 by 20 inches, hence the 16 by 20 inch piece of Teflon. All right guys, so let's go over how much you can be making by selling shirts like these. Now first up, we bought these shirts online on wholesale for about $4 per shirt. Then we have to take into account the cost of the pre-treatment solution and our ink, which is a matter of cents in between the two of them. So let's just say it's about a dollar to be generous. And that brings the overall cost of each shirt to about $5. Now you can sell these shirts online for about $20 to $25. And that gives you a final profit per shirt of between $15 to $20. All right, so let's go ahead and start our pre-treatment process. I'm gonna be starting off with the black shirt and then I'm going to be doing the white shirt. Now I'm gonna be doing them both separately because I do have to change out the pre-treatment solution in my spray gun. Now this spray gun, if I didn't mention it before, we got this one at, I think it was Home Depot or Lowe's and we got it for around $80, but again, it is included with your DTG in the bundle at the time of purchase. Now for the black shirt, I'm going to be using the Image Armor Ultra for black or dark t-shirts. Again, we do sell this at our store if you guys are interested. So to do the pre-treatment on this shirt, what I'm basically just going to do is that I'm going to take my spray gun. I'm going to put it on the lowest setting when it comes to output. To do that, all I have to do is twist this knob out as far out as it'll go, and then just do my best to maybe squeeze the trigger as lightly as I can. Essentially what we're trying to do is just create a very light mist that just covers all areas of the t-shirt or the area that we're planning on printing on. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna take my spray gun and I'm going to spray from bottom to the top, top to bottom, like this, and then take it again and do it horizontally as well. Now when I'm spraying the shirt, what I'm trying to do is stay about a foot away from it. The goal is just to create a light layer of pre-treat on the top surface of the shirt. You don't want to completely soak it. And then after this, we're gonna go ahead and take our shirt to the heat press to cure the pre-treat onto the t-shirt. All right, so let's press the shirt to cure the pre-treat. Like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be using the Ricoma HP1620 to do this. I'm gonna pull out the tray. It's a very cool feature because this way I don't have to work under the hot element of the press, burning my hands and all that. I'm gonna place my t-shirt on the tray. Try to get it all strained out. Now, there are certain areas of the shirt that I did get pre-treat on that I am not pressing, but that doesn't really matter since I'm not gonna be printing on those areas, and those areas are the bottom of the shirt and the sleeves, for example. Now, I'm gonna be pressing this shirt for 60 seconds at 285 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in the instructions for this pre-treat in the back, it states that you should press your shirt to cure it for 30 seconds at 330 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Now, because of the fact that I am doing a polyester shirt, I don't want to be pressing my shirt at that temperature, so I'm going to lower it down to 285 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 330. And then it stays to press it for 30 seconds. And then if you still see any steam or moisture on top of your shirt, to press it for an additional 10 seconds and then do that over and over again until you don't see any steam or moisture. Now I've already done this in the past and I found that it, pressing it for 60 seconds eliminates all my moisture and steam in one go. Alright, so then I'm going to place a sheet of Teflon over my shirt to protect it, insert it into the heat press, and then I'm going to press it. All right. 60 seconds, 285 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, when the heat press is done, it's going to automatically open. I'm gonna take out my shirt, remove the Teflon, and I'm just gonna feel the top of the shirt. And yep, it's nice and dry. We can go ahead and print on this. Take my shirt off and let's go ahead and do the white one now. All right, so let's go ahead and pre-treat our white shirt now. Now, for this, we are going to be using a different pre-treat. We're going to be using the Image Armor Light formula. This is what you want to use for your white shirts, your very light colored shirts, when you're doing either polyester or cotton. This means that I have to change out the pre-treatment formula that I have on my spray gun. And to do that, what you want to do is you want to make sure to take this off, dump out any of the old formula that you have in, you don't want to be mixing the light formula and the ultra formula together you want to dump that out then rinse out this container put some water in it close it back up and do a few sprays with just water inside of the container what this is going to do is that it's going to flush out the spray gun of any of the old pre-treatment formula that you were using for the black shirts now i already did this so i'm just going to go ahead and fill up this container with the light pre-treatment formula now before you use this, make sure to give it a good shake. All right, and now we're ready to do our white shirt. And the process is basically the same. Now because of the fact that this is a white shirt versus a black shirt, you might actually have to put less pre-treat. But if you notice that on your black shirts, your print is not coming out as good as you would want it, it might be because you have to put more pre-treat on a black shirt versus a white shirt. And we're ready to go back over to the heat press. All right, so this part of the process is pretty much identical. Just gonna take out the tray, load up our white t-shirt, cover it with a sheet of Teflon. And again, we're gonna be pressing it for 60 seconds at 285 degrees Fahrenheit at light pressure. Let's take it over to our DTG. Okay, so here we are at our DTG printer. Again, this is the Rico RI-1000. If you guys wanna learn more about it, go down to the link in the description. All right, so first up, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take my black shirt, and unlike what I did in our previous episode when I printed on the cotton shirt, which you can watch by going down to the link in the description, I'm not going to just place my polyester shirt right on top of the platen just like that. What I'm actually gonna do is that I'm gonna thread the platen, and I'll explain why. I'm gonna thread the platen by opening up my t-shirt and just pulling it through. The collar is going to be facing this way or towards me. And then make sure all the leftover fabric is inside the carriage. Now the reason why I threaded the shirt instead of just placing it on top is because of the fact that polyester is a moisture wicking fabric, some of that ink is going to go right through the first layer of fabric of my t-shirt and it's going to land on the second layer of my t-shirt and I don't really want that I don't want any ink on the back of my t-shirt so what I'm going to do is thread the platen so that the ink goes through the first layer and then onto the actual platen of the DTG and then I'll just clean that off after every print all right then I just take my bracket and I place it over the t-shirt so that it stays nice and secure and flat okay now let's go over to our software so that we can send over the design to print all right, so here we are on our printing software, which does come included with your printer. So all I have to do is drag over my design. And there you have it. 
polyester is a moisture wicking fabric. Now what this means is that it does not retain as much moisture as cotton does. This is the reason why we like polyester since they're usually used for workout clothing or sports uniforms because of the fact that they keep us nice and dry and cool. But this also means that it does not take our ink very well from our DTG printer. So what we have to do is that we have to add more ink than we usually do with our cotton shirts. So what we're gonna do to get more ink onto our polyester shirt when printing this design is that for the black shirt, what we're actually gonna do is do a double white layer underneath before we do our colored layer. And then when we do our colored layer, we're gonna try to get as much ink as possible onto it by bumping up our contrast and our saturation. Now for our white shirt, all we have to do is bump up our contrast and our saturation as high as we can. I'm gonna go into our project and I'm gonna start making my way through these tabs. Now, since I'm just gonna print the design dead in the center, I'm not really gonna adjust my size or the position of the design on the garment. And then I'm gonna just go to color. And in color, I'm going to choose my media, which is gonna be a black garment. Now in this specific software, you choose this not just for black shirts, but you would also choose this for dark colored garments like reds or blues. And then I'm gonna go to settings. Now here's where I'm gonna make the adjustments to my colors to try to get as much ink as I possibly can onto that t-shirt. So for contrast, I'm gonna bump it up to 100. And then I'm gonna go to profiles and set my saturation enhancement to high. I'm gonna press okay. And then I'm gonna go to rip and I'm gonna check off use document transparency. What this is gonna do is that it's going to make the software respect the transparency that I built into my design. Then I'm gonna press okay. And as you can see, there is now a black square around my design, meaning that the software is now using the transparency of the design and the black is the black of the t-shirt. Now all we have to do is press print and it's gonna send it over. Okay, so here we have our design. We already sent it over using our network. It appeared right here and we're pretty much set to go. I'm gonna just press set and the machine's gonna do its thing. All right, so here we have our finished black shirt. Now we're not completely done with this. We still have to take this over to the heat press to press it one more time to make sure to cure the ink. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you guys what I meant earlier about threading the shirt and why you have to do it. So I'm gonna take off the bracket, remove my shirt carefully, make sure that it doesn't get folded or wrinkled or stuck to anything. As you see right here, there's a little bit of resistance as I remove the shirt because it is a little bit stuck to the platen. Since we are printing on polyester, some of the ink went right through the shirt and onto the platen, but that's not a big deal. We can easily clean that in between print jobs. And that's why. Take a little bit of either Windex or any type of all-purpose cleaner, spray it on there. I do recommend that you do this immediately after every single print. That way you don't allow for any time for that ink to set in onto your platen and ruin it. And then we just wipe it off with either an old t-shirt, a rag, paper towels, anything that you might have on hand. And that's pretty much it. All right, so let's go over to our heat press now. I'm gonna take out the tray again. All right, then I'm gonna bring in my shirt, place it on my heat press, make sure it's nice and flat. I'm gonna place a sheet of Teflon over it, and we're gonna put it in. Now this time I'm gonna be pressing it for 285 degrees Fahrenheit again, but for 90 seconds. Change my timer to 90 seconds, and here we go. bring it out and there we have our finished shirt okay so that's how you DTG on a black polyester shirt now let's go over and do it on the white shirt the process is pretty much the same with a few little differences 
All right, so now we're back at our software and we're gonna print on our white shirt. So let's just make a few different adjustments here. We're gonna go back into our settings for our design and we're gonna go to color. Instead of choosing black garment, we're gonna choose white garment. We're gonna choose settings. And then here we are going to still do high saturation. And then in the contrast, in the color correction section, we're gonna do 65% contrast and set. Now, because of the fact that this is a white shirt, we don't need as much ink as we needed for our black shirt, but we still need more ink than we do for our regular white cotton shirts. Remember, polyester is a moisture wicking material. I'm gonna press OK. I'm gonna press OK again. And we're gonna press Control Print and go over to our printer. All right, so here we are back at our DTG printer. I'm gonna go ahead and load up our white shirt the same way I did our black one. I'm gonna go ahead and place my bracket over that again. I'm just gonna press set and it's gonna go right in. All right, so that's it for printing on the white shirt. Let's go ahead and heat press it. All right, so we're gonna throw on our shirt onto the heat press. Now for the white shirt, we're actually gonna press it at 285 degrees again, but for 40 seconds since it is a white shirt. We don't need to press it as long as the black one. So I'm gonna change my timer to 40 seconds. I'm gonna cover it with a sheet of Teflon. Put it in. There we go. All right, here we go. I'm gonna pull it out, move the Teflon sheet, and there we have our finished print. All right guys, that's it for this episode. I hope this video helped you see that it's possible to print on polyester with a DTG printer. The key takeaway here is that you have to pre-treat your garment if you want your prints to come out looking crisp and clean. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, make sure you drop them in the comment section below. The Rico RI1000 is available as a special package at Ricoma, so click on the link in the description below to order yours today. Also, head over to Facebook and join our free Facebook group, Embroidering Custom Apparel Mastery. There you can connect with other apparel decorators like myself and ask any questions you might have. And to stay up to date with the latest Ricoma news, you can follow us on Instagram at RicomaHQ. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week on the next episode of Print Pros.